Now that's what I'm talking about. And how do I talk about this without spoilers? The answer is, I can't talk about it without spoilers. So this is your warning, leave now, five, four, three, two, one, get out. Obi-Wan episode five pretty much fixes all the problems I had from episode four. While that was a slightly underwhelming episode, this episode was amazing. Had so much fan service, so many story details, lots of things done right. From the very opening shot, we finally get Hayden Christensen back as Anakin Skywalker in the flesh, not in the suit, in a pre-Attack of the Clones flashback sequence with Obi-Wan. And what is that flashback sequence? A duel between Master and Apprentice. And it is great, the choreography is nice, uh, it's shot well. It's actually probably the best shot action sequence in the episode, which I'll get more to that later, but that's not the only flashback we get. We also get confirmation of a theory that I talked about is that Reva is the youngling from the opening episode in the Order 6016. What they show here, some suspected we may see Anakin like going and rampaging across the temple. And we don't get extended lightsaber fights, but we do see the rampaging as he slaughters younglings in this episode. That was hard to watch, but it was also necessary to sell what Reva went through and how awful it was and how far Anakin truly fell to the dark side. Hayden Christensen's age shows a little bit in these scenes, knowing in my head that he was supposed to be like between 19 and 22 of the time of those flashbacks. And now he's in his 40s and it didn't look like they did any de-aging tech at all or if they did it was very subtle he just looked old and in fact a friend of mine mentioned that obi-wan actually looked younger in the flashbacks than he did it, it's a little bit of a nitpick it does take you out briefly for just a second but it's so exciting to see him back i really don't care plus they kind of play it as a shared flashback dream sequence almost kind of vision thing so you could argue that they're just perceiving each other as they would be today I know that's a stretch. So Reva's motivations are exactly what we thought they were, and I'm glad. It retroactively makes her arc better across the show. How she is duplicitous in nature, uh, her acting here I thought was excellent, and the whole time she didn't just want Kenobi to get to Vader, she wanted Kenobi for revenge, and she wanted Anakin revenge, both for the part they played or didn't play in Order 66. And that's pretty poetic. It, it's really nice that they followed up on the tragic youngling events and really played into as this youngling became an inquisitor and went after Vader. But it will ease some minds that Vader knew all along. It was a plan to see how far they go he was using her. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of how it works or dissecting the scenes and all that, but it worked and the Grand Inquisitor is alive. I don't know why I ever doubted. I still thought it was a little weird to kill him off for a few episodes and then bring him back, but if it was an elaborate plot to draw out Kenobi, it worked and I'll give the show credit for that. Darth Vader continues to prove why he's the best Star Wars character who ever lived. Not because he's full of innate goodness, but because he's just so interesting and also cool at the same time. And when I say cool, I don't mean it's cool that he murders and rampages in the way he does. He's just a fascinating character. His design is awesome and he does cool stuff on screen. For example, he goes in today, he senses that Obi-Wan is fleeing and when the ship flies off, he goes a force unleashed on that thing and yanks it back down to the ground and then tears it open with his bare hands through the force. I love seeing that display of power from the chosen one on screen. Vader added the height of his power. It's just, it made me giddy when I was watching it. I got goosebumps. I was just, I was, it was just really awesome. And then for the other ship to take off while he's distracted by the other, don't do that where you're like, oh, he could have just grabbed the other ship. Why didn't he grab the other ship? The force is convenient when it needs to be. Don't go there. Just accept the fact that he was distracted and couldn't do it or it took too much out of him. Speaking of Vader and Reva, the fight they had, I thought was really cool. Vader just effortlessly, effortlessly blocks all of her attacks with his hands and throwing her about and just kind of casually toying with her and when he does get serious it's over like that the cinematography and the visuals in this episode are a little underwhelming i won't go as far to say that they're outright bad i did notice a couple shots with the volume looked very volume y with the backgrounds and the brown rock on jabim just doesn't look great behind them for some reason i don't know if they just didn't brighten the the lighting in front of it enough on the actors 
so they stand out enough to where it doesn't look like they're muddied into the background. But also just the cinematography of the action scenes and how it's cut and edited. It's entertaining, sure. There's a lot of handheld shaky cam when Obi-Wan is fighting all the stormtroopers in the hallways and in the corridors and such. Like I said, it's fun to watch, but it's not as compelling as it could be visually because it's not shot as well as it could be. I, see, I feel the same way to a lesser extent about Vader's fight with Reva. I think I was so in the moment I didn't notice it as bad, but there's a lot of wide shots. And it's just, it's just a little sloppy in how it's edited, but it's still, again, very fun. I feel the complete opposite about the fight with Obi-Wan and Anakin in the flashback. I thought that was expertly done. Reminded me of the prequels in the best of ways. And I was super happy as a big prequel fan to see those. Going back to the corridor fights, Stormtroopers literally have the worst aim ever. There are dozens of stormtroopers in front of all these characters and none of them get hit until one of them does. And that's Tala. And I thought her sacrifice was very well done here. Uh, it was very moving, especially with the droid, whose name I can't remember at the moment. Completes her arc. And I'm glad that they had the guts to go through with that and really push that as a driving factor for Obi-Wan, someone laying down his their life for him. That's another reason to spring him back in the action. And because they weren't caught. I really liked the conversations between Obi-Wan and Reva. I thought they were done well. I thought they were staged well. I thought her acting and his acting were phenomenal. And it really just, this, this episode was powerful in, in a lot of ways. Fan service done right. It was very pleasing in the sense of the entertainment factor. And also there was enough story revelations that we've been craving for five weeks at this point. And it sets up the finale almost perfectly. Leia has another great little dialogue moment demanding a ladder, which is just, Leia. She's just great at this point. I love her. Oh, I forgot to mention. No one dies of stab wounds. <laughs> the Grand Inquisitor got stabbed. Lives. Reva gets stabbed. And they kind of played up like she's going to die here. She doesn't. Except for Qui-Gon Jinn. He died when he got stabbed. I really did think she was dead for a moment. I'm not sure where that's going to go, given what she found at the end of the episode. So the finale has to balance the Vader Kenobi standoff again and them fighting having that rematch of the century. It has to get Leia home. It has to finish Reva's story with her finding Luke on Tatooine. So will Obi-Wan meet her on Tatooine? Will she choose not to go? Will she survive the show? Will she live? I don't know yet. And the finale also has to wrap everything up. So that's a lot for a finale. So I'm hoping that one's about 55 minutes or longer or around that time, just so it has plenty of time to wrap up all the loose story threads that are there. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little concerned, just given some of the other Disney Plus shows and how rushed the endings can feel, but I'm gonna attempt to stay positive, and yeah, always look for the good. Have you seen the newest episode of Kenobi? Do you like the show? If so, why or why not? Tell us about it in the comments, and I'm looking forward to talking to you about the finale next week. Oh, and subscribe while you're at it.